and welcome back to Booklust. I'm Nancy Pearl. My guest today is Julie Atsuka, whose new book, The Swimmers, was just published this year. Julie, thank you for being on the show. Nancy, I'm thrilled. Thank you so much for having me. I wanted to talk to you. Well, there's lots I want I want to ask you, but the book that you that you became known for, which I believe was a if a Seattle Reads book. I think you were here for the Buddha in the attic. Um, actually, no, it was for the, when the emperor was divine. Oh, when the emperor was divine. Your first, your first novel. Um, one of the things that I I love about your books is well, you, because you're a beautiful writer. Let me just say, you could just pick sentences out, and you just want to like, oh my goodness, where did that come from? You're so great at that. But I loved that in um, in um, w when the Buddha the Buddha in the attic and in the swimmers you don't tell the stories in a traditional way. I mean, there's not a third person narrator. Um, you, you, in the swimmers and in the Buddha in the attic, you use the um, second, the, oh God, I always get this confused. You talk about it from the point of view of we, we did this, we did that. And I, I, I in the Buddha in the attic, you talk, you do that, to such great effect that you, we get, as readers, I think we get the sense of, of this community of Japanese Americans and what is happening to them in their lives. But it's a community. It's not necessarily one person. And then in the last chapter of The Buddha in the Attic, and I, this is not a spoiler, we all know what happened to the Japanese um, during World War II in the United States. In the last chapter, the we has, has moved from being the Japanese Americans to the um, people left behind in the cities, the small towns and cities where they lived. That was so powerful to me. I, where did where did that idea come from? Actually, I think I might have gotten one of the ideas when I was in Seattle. Um, I remember after one of the readings that I gave, there was a white woman who'd been alive during World War II, and she'd been a child during um, the war. And she she told me that she had a Japanese classmate. She must have been in first grade, maybe. And one day she just she disappeared, and she never knew what happened to her. So I always wondered how her classmate's disappearance was explained to her by her parents, by her, te did the teacher say anything? Um, so, you know, I'd always had in my mind that I, I kind of wanted to explore what it would be like from the point of view of a mostly white town after the Japanese neighbors have disappeared, but I, I didn't quite get to it. And when the emperor was divine, so I saved that um, for the Buddha in the attic. And I realized, I think fairly early on in writing the Buddha in the attic, that that would be actually the perfect last chapter for the novel to suddenly right. fit it. Yeah. Right. And it was the perfect last chapter. It was, um, your books are so short and compact, and yet they pack such a punch, um, you know, such an emotional, it's like they reach out and, and grab you and, and take you into the pages of the book. Is, is that, a fair description, do you think? You know, I don't set out to, I, I, I mean, I'm, I work, you know, very intuitively, so I'm not setting out to try and make an emotional impact. I'm just kind of writing scenes as I see them in my head or else as I hear them in my head. Um, and I don't think I often realize what I'm doing, you know, or that, or how it's even coming. I mean, people tell me that, the swimmers is so sad. And I don't think I realized how sad it was. I was, I, you know, I thought it was kind of funny, you know, but I mean, I think humor and sadness are flip sides of the same coin. But, um, and I also, I don't aspire to be compact. I'd love to be able to write a 200 page novel. You know? <laughs> I aspire to be longer, but um, for some reason, every sing single one of my novels is about exactly the same way. That just seems to be how long it takes me to get through, you know, whatever story it is that I have to tell. How, how did you decide to put the swimmers together? Because 
when I think about it, I think about it as two novellas uh-huh. and, that are connected by one one character, um, and and I I I wondered when I was reading it, when I finished it, and was thinking about it, w- w- how you made that decision to. I well, I had sketched out the first you know, couple scenes of the swimmers in the swimming pool um, uh, maybe 15 years ago while I was still writing The, the Boot in the Attic. And then I, I just thought, oh, this would be a fun idea for a story. And I just kind of stashed them in the drawer. And I'd also written the middle chapter, Diem Perditi, a couple years after that. But still, that was while I was working on The, the Buddha in the Attic. And then when I finished The Buddha in the Attic, I had no idea what to do next. But I, I looked at those swimmers swimming pool scenes again. And I just thought, I can't not write at least this story because it's such, it was just such great material. I thought, um, just a fun world um, to dive into. And (laughs) (laughs) Um, so corny, but um, at a certain point, I I knew that one of the swimmers um, was suffering from dementia. Um, And then at a certain point, I realized that uh, she could be a bridge to the character in Diem Perditi. And I'd never imagined the Diem Perditi chapter somehow fitting in with the pools, the pool mm-hmm. scenes. Mm-hmm. Once I had that idea, then I thought, oh, okay, well that, you know, that would be the logical thread, tying these two right. disparate pieces. To, I mean, I would tell people for years that I was writing a book about swimming and dimension. It just sounded <laughs> so bizarre and I didn't know if I could pull it off. But, um, but once I realized that one of the characters could be there very peripherally in the beginning. I mean, hopefully you don't even know that it's going to end up being right. our story, yeah. yes. one of many. Um, and then when you go into the second half, then you realize that she's actually been there from the very beginning, from the very first paragraph, actually. Right. When 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 people say how sad the book is, um, I, I think for me that that's kind of undeniable, uh, how sad especially the second half is, but it was so, um, the the sadness was, was contained in, in, in kind of a truth and a language, I think, that I finished it, and of course it was sad, and I think I might have had tears, you know, in my eyes at the end, but but I didn't come away. I came away from it thinking this is one of the best written books I've ever read. So, <laughs> I mean, goodness, goodness. So, and and then I gave it to a friend, and she said it's so depressing. I mean, she read it and appreciated the language. <clears throat> Excuse me, but she said, "Oh my gosh, it is so depressing." But partly, I think it's because all of my contemporaries are, you know, at that age where dementia is on our minds, you know, all the time. Are, are, so, so we should, I think, maybe even back up a little bit and, and just, how do you describe the book for, um, for our viewers who haven't um, read it? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I do say it is about dementia and swimming, um, <laughs> but it, I mean, I, it's such a it's such a hard book to it describe. <laughs> really, you know, I mean, it's it begins in a recreational swimming pool, so it's really about a community of people, and they're um, I would say rather obsessed, just fanatical about their need to swim. It is a need to swim, um, but it's a kind of a found community. Um, these people haven't selected each other as their fellow, you know, brothers and sisters in the pool. They just end up there. Um, and um, so it's about the, you know, the bonds that form. And I also see the second half as being kind of a reflection of that underground world and that, especially in the Bella Vista chapter, you have, again, a community of people that are thrown together, not necessarily because they want to be there, but, and again, there are rules, just like in the pool, there are rules. Um, and both are confined boxes, really. You have a box, which is a concrete pool, and you have a box, which is a care home above ground. Um, so I kind of wanted to compare these two worlds. Yeah, I, 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 and I think that um, 
the, the group of swimmers are, for the most part, described by their habits in the pool. So, um, so we don't know their names, and I, and I suspect that many of their fellow swimmers don't know each other's names. There's always the person who's, you know, maybe goes too fast in lane two. And then the swimming pool closes because a mysterious crack is found in the foundations. Um, which throws everybody's lives, everybody of these swimmers' lives into, um, like, what are we going to do because we need to swim? Which, of course, begs the question, are you a swimmer? Oh, well, you know, I grew up in, in Southern California, um, so I did, you know, I went to the beach every day in the summer, but that's a very, I mean, I, I never was a lap swimmer in a pool, but so I, I, but I did grow up, you know, feeling very comfortable in the ocean and the water. Mm -hmm. um, and I did junior lifeguards and I, I just swam a lot. <laughs> but it was never, you know, I, I, I you know, I, yeah, I was never a, you know, competitive swimmer at all, but I, I just swam because it was fun. And then in my thirties, I began to swim at a local pool in New York city. And um, that was the first time I'd ever, you know, swum laps. Um, but I loved it. It was just really, and it was such a different experience of being in the water than swimming in the ocean. It was just, you know, you know, very, you're in the same lane every day and you're staring at a black line. And yet it's very kind of quieting and meditative. Um, and I also just, I really just enjoyed the, the really odd array of people that went there. Um, <laughs> and as well as the scene in the locker room, you know, the women's locker room, it's just a, one of those rare segregated spaces. Um, and that was its own world too. Um, so yeah, but then I stopped swimming many years ago also. So I don't, I don't do that anymore, but um, it is a place that I'm, you know, that I, it, it, the water is a place that I, that I have, you know, spent a lot of time in, in my life and I'm very comfortable in. So the first part, the first half of the swimmers, which is set, it, 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 swimming, um, is told from the first person plural point of view. And the second half of the book um, at Bella Vista um, is told from a different point of view. You, it, you, you do, and and it's really about. I read it as really about a mother and a daughter who are now faced with, who who who, as all probably all mothers and daughters have had their conflicts, but are now faced with certain things that they have to deal with together yeah i mean life is finite right i mean it does come to an end and i think that it's easy to ignore that for a long time until you know catastrophe strikes or the beginning of the end begins with the onset of something like dementia but um they are forced to deal with each other in a finite amount of time um and in a confined space um so everything in a way so that what you're saying about being compact i mean that, that's another way of compact right. Things. I mean, the, the pressure is greater. Yeah. Um, I, I always, I, 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 not every novel is, or short story is autobiographical, but I know from my own experience of writing a novel that you as the author are, are in it in one way or another, even though that character is, I mean, in my novel, none of the characters are exactly me. But there's bits and pieces of me in the various different characters. Is that is that true? Do you think is that does that statement resonate at all with you? Yeah, I think. I mean, my first novel was really not about me at all. You know, it was about something that happened to my mother and her family. So it was. Um, in that way, remove from myself. And my second novel was even more distant from me. Um, right. right. Um, and this is the one that is definitely closest to me. Right. Uh, yeah. And um, I, you know, I felt, I think another reason that, that I use this second person is because I kind of find it unbearable to write in the first person. You know, I just, I, I needed a little bit of distance from right. the me character. Yep. Yeah. Um, and the you voice was a way to, it just somehow aestheticized the whole experience and what it was looking at. Yeah, yes. What, did it always, was it that way from the beginning, the you? 
No, actually, well, Diem Perditi was um, mm -hmm. always written from the very beginning in that second person voice, which I actually love. Um, yeah, I love it. I love it, too. It's a fun voice to use, right? It's very, very fun. Um, but the last chapter I tried from the first person, you know, does, or try, also tried focusing it more on the Alice character rather than on the daughter. I just tried it many different ways. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, I, you know, I thought, oh, well, why don't I use the you voice like in the Diem Perditi chapter? Right, right. Yeah. I, yeah. I, um, I, I, a neurologist friend of, of mine read this book and oh. said that that your description of the care home and what was happening to the, the mother was so right on. He said he'd never read anything that told the truth about it better than this. That's so interesting because I thought I was really exaggerating things. Not that I, you know, I didn't think that I was just describing reality straight on. I thought I was really hyping it up and making uh -huh. it real, real. So that's very interesting to hear. Yeah, yes, he didn't, he he just, he, he, he also thought it was just an amazing, an amazing novel um, and very true. The, 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 the daughter is a writer who feels extremely guilty in her life because she's moved away and she has her life and, you know, there are mother-daughter issues as, we all know mothers and daughters. I have two daughters myself, so I know. Um, and I was a daughter. I definitely know that. Um, and you're a writer. And you live in New York City and you grew up in Southern California. But it's not a picture of you. I mean, y y you distanced it in many ways, which was that a conscious decision or, or did you? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I took, you know, I drew from my own experience as, you know, as the daughter of someone who was ailing from dementia. Right. Um, I took bits and pieces, but some things I completely inverted. So I would never want this to be read as. No, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Um, because many things are, are, you know, are not true. <laughs> yes. And I think that sense of that inverting the truth is what you know, the best writers do, or else you're going to write auto fiction, which I'm not a fan of. Yeah. I mean, for me, everything has to be in the service of the narrative of the story. Right. Right. So I see on your wall <laughs> is it, it, it looks like a bunch of notes. Is, is that like work in progress or what does it serve? Yes. It's, um, uh, and like I was saying earlier, I have another wall to my left and another, you know, <laughs> cardboard hanging you know, over itself over there. Um, but these are notes for just different things that I'm working on. Um, and I wish I'd have more walls in my apartment. That's what I would say. But I think I work very visually. I mean, it's very, you know, it's very kind of tactile, you know, I can, if I'm, you know, working on one scene or thinking about one thing, I can just, you know, uh, gather all the notes for that, you know, that scene and just put them in one place and kind of look at what I have. And, and often I'll just forget that I'd written something down and I'll be walking past and I'll look at something and be, Oh, you know, I wrote it down a few months ago. And isn't that interesting? I it had completely slipped my mind. So, um, yeah, so I guess it's just, I, I write down what I think are interesting things <laughs> that I might want to return to. And I just stick them on my wall. Was that how you've always worked when you were working on your first novel? You know, actually, on my first novel, I yeah, I was living in a different apartment, but there was a small, I guess it was like kind of like a walk-in closet, like as you were going to the bathroom. And so, I, but I just worked in there and I, it didn't have any windows or anything, but um, I just stuck stuff. I, you know, I was renting, so I just taped stuff up. To, I didn't worry about paint or anything. <laughs> and um, it was like, like living inside my brain. It was kind of great. Um, so yeah, but I think for the Buddha in the attic, I used um, index index cards more and, and not so much the notes. Uh huh. Uh, that's oh, oh, oh I, no, I was just going to say that um, my husband, who, who is a Buddhist, when we lived in a bigger house, used to meditate in the linen closet. So so I can identify with your walk-in closet doing the writing there. 
the top of a mountain, a linen closet. I mean, it's all the same, right? <laughs> Wherever you are, you are. It was it was pretty weird the time we had an overnight guest who who, you know, opened the linen closet to get a washcloth, I believe, or a towel, and saw him meditating. <laughs> that was very cute. Um, when, what, what do you read? What do you like to read? What kind of books? Uh, well, I have, I mean, I, I read, like, the first two years of the pandemic, I, I was just loving and reading a lot of Rachel Cusk. Um, are you familiar with, with her work? I am. I am. Yes. I, the, the whole outline trilogy is just truly amazing. Um, I, you know, even though I write semi humorously, I don't, do I read? I, I mean, I love Julie Hecht. Uh huh. Yes, me too. I love, yes, do the windows open. I, my favorite, um, yes, the, what that has, has the line um, in the, in do the windows open where she says, um, it, it, it is true that the de dentists have the highest suicide rate among other other physicians. Not high enough, in my opinion. The character uh, says, "I uh, yes, I love Julie Hecht. She is great. I mean, she's just brilliant. I think she's really one of the best. Um, yeah, and I mean, I like Margarita Raw, although I haven't read her recently. When I was First, beginning to write, I was reading a lot of Hemingway. I think you could probably see that. And when the Emperor was Divine, I was really mm -hmm. impressed by um, his short stories, by the Nick Adams stories in particular. Um, but and now, and I, I mean, I always read a lot of nonfiction just for my research, you know. So I, I write a lot of memoirs about Alzheimer's. Um, mm -hmm. But um, yeah, but I always like to be reading something, you know. It, it's right. it, it feeds me. I mean, yeah, it really does. Some readers, I mean, some writers, I guess, don't like to read anything at all. I think while they're writing, right. um, but, um, but I, I feel like it always helps, especially if I'm kind of stuck. Um, well, you have, so, I think when like writers say, I, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't read fiction when I'm writing fiction because I don't want that voice to get in my head, but you have such a distinctive voice that that it's I I can understand why that isn't an issue for you. Oh yeah, I mean, although I mean, I guess in, like the Hemingway was, I mean, uh, he was definitely in my head, you know. But I guess maybe I feel like the swimmers is probably a voice that's closer to my real self, you know, rather than a constructed voice. I feel like the voice that I used for when the Emperor was divine was more constructed, just a voice that I you know that I tried on and used. Uh -huh. um, but um, but I'm you know I'm I'm open to influence. I don't I don't mind that. Yeah, <laughs> like right. it, Are you working on something on a new? Are, are you always working on a on a new book or a story or whatever? I'm always working on something, but I don't always know. I mean, when I finished, when the Emperor was Divine, it took me about a year of just sketching out different scenes. I had no idea what I was going to do next. Mm -hmm. And then, other, and then with the boot in the attic, like I said, I I did go to the swimmers stories, but more with the idea that I just need to write these stories because they're really fun ideas, not right. Right. This the beginning of my next novel. And now I'm working on something, but I don't really know what it is yet. I don't know if it's fiction or nonfiction, but it's, mm -hmm. just, you know, but it's a, it's a little too early mm -hmm. to talk about and to say what it is, but I am working on something. Um, and I always, it's really a nice feeling to be working on something when your novels just come out because it's right. just a, it's a very weird, disorienting time. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah I, it is, I know. And waiting for the reviews and yeah, it's just a, a difficult time. What, what would you write with nonfiction? Would you, would you write the same, would you stay in the same um, subject matter, do you think? Or, um, and don't share it with, if it's too yeah. soon. I mean, don't worry about, just say, I don't know or whatever. I, I think, I mean, I could say yes in a way. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but it, it, you know, I mean, I'm thinking more about contemporary times. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Has the recent anti-Asian attacks, has that influenced your thinking about what you want to write? Short answer, yes, completely. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be very yeah. hard for it not to, especially yeah. with, for a writer as, as yes. sensitive yeah. as yeah. you are. 
um, before we we stop, I just I just have to say with the Buddha in the attic, that that first chapter of the picture brides coming over is so darn powerful. I mean, oh my gosh, Julie, <laughs> uh, that that I I don't know that should have been published separately as a short story somewhere. Was it? It was, it was in Granta, yeah. And the, yeah. Yeah. the 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 middle chapter also was published, yeah, in, in Granta. Um, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. If you had written nothing else beside that that first chapter, oh. you would still be um, just a, a terrific, terrific writer. And I just can't recommend your your books highly enough for for our viewers. So, thank you, thank you for. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for being you and writing the books you're writing. And um, and good luck with whatever you're working on. I, for one, will read it uh, very enthusiastically. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.